Well, welcome into this Photoshop in 30 seconds tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com where we cover everything about Photoshop in 30 seconds or less. It usually, these tutorials are more like three to seven minutes, but hey, who's counting? Today, we're gonna talk about the foreground and background colors and while that may sound dreadful, there's actually a lot of quick time-saving things you can uh, do with the foreground and background color. For instance, did you know that hitting the letter D resets your foreground and background colors to the default black and white, and then hitting the letter X flips the foreground and background color back and forth, back and forth, just like that. Um, you can also hold down Option, Delete, that will be Alt, Backspace on the PC, and that fills your layer or your selection if you have a selected if you have a selection created excuse me with the foreground color or you can hit command delete or control backspace to fill the layer or selection with the background color I'm just going to undo those two little features. That's great stuff. That's great information to have. Now, you can edit your uh, foreground background color at any time by just selecting the swatch and choosing something like a nice red. Of course, you can always choose the actual icons instead of the hotkeys, the little black-white icon to set your colors back to the default, and the little double arrow icon to flip foreground and background. Um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to choose a red color again. Let's say I want to save this red color. I can always save any color I like to the swatches panel, or when you hover out away from the picker, you get an eyedropper tool to select a color from your image. I want to pick up some of this yellowish light coming off the side of these tanker cars, all right, and I want to add that as a swatch, and I can just call this, you know, butter yellow or something. Uh, I could add it to my current Adobe CC library. We're not going to do that. We're not going to get into that right now. Hit OK, and I'm going to hit OK here, and up here on my swatches panel, sure enough, I have a butter yellow swatch, which I can sample and then use in whatever I'm uh, doing here in Photoshop. Now, one of the other things you can do is for web design applications, you can always copy the hexadecimal code and take that into your CSS or whatever code you're using uh, if you have a place where you're using the hexadecimal code. Um, note also, obviously, you can edit using the saturation as your primary uh, input device, if you will. I'd rather have fine control over the saturation of the hue that I'm selecting, right? Rather than maybe having control of the hue that I'm selecting. And then, of course, brightness. So I know that I want a very saturated green. All right, now how bright do I want it? So you've got some options, and you can also do the same thing with LAB or RGB. HSB, hue, saturation, brightness tend to be the most popular, but they all kind of work um, the same. Now, one other kind of cool little thing is you have uh, color libraries, like your Pantone libraries, everything like that. You can come in here and select a specific color if you're looking to copy a color or just work and be uber print safe. I'm going to go back to the color picker. Uh, speaking of being print or web safe, now, it's, especially with regard to being web safe, this stuff is not necessarily um, something you need to be hyper concerned with, but it's good to know about it because there definitely are projects where you do need to be sensitive about it. The top warning icon here, that basically means this is not really a print safe color, and if I click on it, it's going to bring me to the closest available print safe color that it can find. And the little warning icon on the bottom, which is more like a cube, that's basically saying this is not a web safe color. And if I click on that, it's going to bring me to the closest web safe color. So I can hit OK and commit that change and everything is good in the color picker department. Now, that's not to say there aren't options in changing the way the color picker works. We can go to the preferences, that would be Command K, and you can choose between Adobe and Apple's color picker. And I wanna say with Windows, I can't remember off the top of my head that you have the option for the Windows OS. Somebody let me know in the comments. Uh, but you can change this to the Apple color picker, hit OK, and sure enough, when I select, I get Apple's color picker, uh, which I don't, I just don't like it. I'm not used to it. I'm used to the Adobe color picker. I hate the Windows color picker, like system color picker as well. Um, but, you know, hey, if you like it more, by all means, go for it, and it is available for you. So, for the color picker in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.